Here they come! I warn you now, I brought beer today. Always a dangerous decision. Always makes things either much better or much, much worse. Welcome back to Alan Wake, a super intriguing, creepy, spoopy horror game thing while I'm playing. Uh, that's, that's all I thought of this speech, so let's just dive straight back in and... Oh! I don't even have to talk much because there's a convenient episode recap, isn't there? Yes! Let's look forward to that. Yes. Previously on Alan Wake, Alice has been kidnapped. Alan, please help me. Alice? You'll do exactly what I say if you ever want to see your wife again. I can't tell anyone except my agent Barry. Damn it, Barry, they'll kill her. And Barry's kind of an asshole, and I don't trust him. The ransom is a manuscript I supposedly wrote that's coming true before my eyes. It happened just the way it was on that page. So dark. I have found only a few scattered pages. I want the entire manuscript. The deadline is in two days. Ah uh, yes, the incredibly suspicious, the like definitely not Mr. being manipulated Wake. girl. Yes. Yeah. She's resourceful. I told you you were too hard on her. Listen, I found out all sorts of interesting stuff while I was digging around. Porn mostly. Yeah. Mr. Wake, it's Sheriff Breaker. We have an FBI agent here, Agent Nightingale. <laughs> that's like the most that's like the most mysterious nick and name you could possibly have. Agent okay. Nightingale. Right over, FBI agent Keep extraordinaire. Quick. Help you folks. Name's Randolph. I'm the manager. We're looking for Rose. Works as a waitress down at the diner. He looks like that Rose. comedian C.K. Lewis. Nice girl. Who wants to know? I'm Alan Wake. The writer, huh? I heard on the radio you were visiting. Well, I'll show you her trailer. That Rose, she's a nice girl. Always pays her rent on time. As I was Has he got a limp? Now, I found all sorts of weird stuff from the local newspaper's archives. This place is crazy. Man, I need to call this episode Weird Al. I don't know why I didn't think of that sooner. Legends come true, and get this, most of this stuff takes place around Cauldron Lake. Well, you ain't wrong, mister. The Indians thought the lake was a doorway to the underworld. Oh. I'm the god fearing Oh god, he's a zombie. Yeah, okay. Anyway, there was an island there owned by a guy called Thomas Zane. Now, some of the articles I found about him make him out to be a famous writer, but I ran a bunch of searches, couldn't find a single thing he wrote. Zane was heavily into diving, so much so that the place came to be called Diver's Isle. But the volcano under the lake erupted in 1970. Wait, 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 there's a volcano under there? Does that make any sense at all? Okay. Yeah, how about that? It was there in the morning, as if it had well. fallen from the sky. But it would take a tornado to lift something like that. We're damn lucky it didn't crush any of the trailers. This is turning into Life is Strange. I just know it. I just fucking know it. It's gonna be a tornado. And time travel. And it's gonna be great. Ha! Huh. Randy's dogs. Huh. Hang on, is this not the way to go? No? Do we, do we go this way? Okay. The way he's walking, I saw an amazing video just this morning called um, Skyrim IRL. That's just literally a guy, I'm going to pause and describe this. It's a guy, he just stares at the screen and goes, Hello, outsider! And then he walks into the room, and there's all these chairs, and he just loudly walks into the chairs, so that all the chairs are awkwardly being pushed out of his way just while he's walking, as if... He's like, he's like, he's not reacting like there are chairs, he just walks through the chairs, and there's this horrible scraping noise of all the chairs being pushed out of the way. 
And this goes on for like 10 seconds. And he just calmly sits down on one of the random chairs and acts like nothing happened. I was like, perfect. Perfect. A+. plus. There's also a very similar video called uh, Oblivion. It's it's called like Oblivion IRL or something like that. It's just the guy who says, you're under arrest. Pay with your blood. And then he runs away, jumps in a swimming pool, swims towards the camera again, then just goes, why won't you die? <laughs> so good. I'm going to stop pausing now. I just had to explain that because it made me laugh so much, those two videos. Just a week earlier, they were lovers. Sure, Jagger's a local spook store. The scratching hag comes for you in the dark. Childish stuff like that. Oh god, anyway, that's gonna be foreshadowing, isn't it? I'm just getting to the best part. All of part of the reason like this game creeps me out so much is I am like deathly afraid of forests at night. I blame Blair Witch. I blame Blair Witch, and I mean the original Blair Witch, not this remake nonsense. The idea of remaking Blair Witch is just so pointless to me, because half of what makes that movie work is how low budget and crummy it is, you know? It's such a thrown together for like $5,000 movie that the idea of doing a big budget sequel is just... Even if it was relatively low budget, what's the point? It's like... You know, no one expected Blair Witch to blow up like it did either, you know? It's so of its time. The idea of making a, a any sort of... Well, they did make a sequel, didn't they, actually, previously? You mind me asking what you want with her? We're just here to talk to her, pal. <laughs> I love him with his limp and his military trousers. I was a nam, you know. Fairly crummy. I like, I like all the plants that are dying and there's a big hole in the floor. And this door wouldn't keep out a cat, let alone. Welcome to... to... Oh dear. Mr. Wake. I'm... I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript? Oh. Oh yes. Yes. Please, come in. I'm sorry, I'm extremely high right now. Hey, this is really good! Please drink my tea. Yes. It's my not suspicious. I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. A muse to inspire you. Oh, for Barry? She doesn't have anything. Yeah. Uh, hey, Al. Al, what's... Oh. Who could have seen this coming? What? I feel like Al should have been slightly more suspicious. I mean, even before it became apparent she was possessed by demons, this girl was already creeping me out because she was a super fan and it was really weird. Oh, she's just smiling creepily. Oh no! It's coming for you, hiding in my barber's skin. I'm too weak to stop it. You must turn the lights on. What? I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. You must finish what you started. I, uh... I insist. You must turn the lights on. Turn the light on. <gasps> oh god. Oh, it's me. Oh boy. Oh no. I didn't like any of that that just happened. None of that. I felt nauseous. Hung over. Only anger kept me going. Um, oh. I can't tell reality from dream anymore, but it seems I have an imaginary editor to help me. She's an old woman in a funeral dress. I call her Barbara Jagger. She's very strict. I I'm writing faster and faster. My manuscript is being heavily revised. The edits are getting very aggressive, and each day there's less of me and more of her. I hate it, but I know she's right. She promises me I can save Alice this way. She knows more of this than I do. About the complex incantation I'm attempting. About this place. She's worked with another writer under similar circumstances, Thomas Zane. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I'm getting close. I can feel it. Oh god, I'm getting close. I can, I can feel it. Are you there yet? I'm getting close. I'm getting closer. Sorry, sorry. I had to, I had to do that. Um... During that cutscene, I was distracted by this fucking uh, 
terrifying mural of um dare I ask what happens in this <laughs> in this in this bedroom with with the stuffed mammoths watching that's a nice touch so she has stuffed mammoths from uh because that's the mascot of the park isn't it yeah, yeah. nice Rose to oh shit I had less than 12 hours left to meet the kidnapper all I could do was get Barry into the car, work something out once I got on the road. Um. So. I'm not sure whether that lady is on my side or not. I mean, she seems incredibly sinister and evil, but. By that lady, I mean the ghost lady and the widows. I don't. Uh. Welcome to the Oh Dear Diner. What can I get you today? Coffee? I couldn't work up much hate for Rose. Something had used her to get to me and left its mark. Oh. First refill is free. Oops, I was accidentally staring up her skirt for a second there, don't mind that. Would you like to hear today's specials? Accidentally, I swear. Have a nice day. Come back soon. <laughs> Harry was out of it. He was way too heavy to carry. Uh, okay. Um What do I What do I do here? Um Do I just leave, I guess? Okay. My gun and flashlight were gone. I'd have to find a way to get Barry into the car as quickly as possible. There was no time to waste. Uh so he's too heavy to lift. I assume I can't just walk over and pick him up. No. No. Okay. Oh, that's the sprint button. Um. Um. Oh, to hell with it. I think this whole, um, turning the HUD off is more trouble that's worth. Okay, get to the car. I hadn't picked that up from the narration, so, uh... I think the concern about wasting time walking around lost is too great. I just stepped outside to catch a breath of fresh air. Let me tell you, the weather's getting heavy. Hot and heavy, oh yeah. Once the weather takes a turn like this, I can't sleep at all. It's all tangled bed sheets and dark thoughts. Oh, God. Punctuated by the occasional plunge into nightmare. <laughs> is it just me? Well, perhaps it is. But I hope I can make the night a little bit easier to get through. Caller, you're on KBF FM. Hey, hi, it's Walt Snyder. What's on your mind, Walt? Well, I was going out for a walk in the woods, and I got attacked by these weird zombie darkness creatures, and oh, I just had to get it off my chest, you know. But, uh, I ain't been drinking either, you know, I just... Well, you sound like a man with a problem. Yeah, yeah, uh, I had a... You sound pretty fucked up there, Walt. Is this the guy who was in the jail cell and we had to turn the light on? Yeah. Well, you know, he's, uh, you know, Daddy's my best friend, and, uh, they let me out on bail today. And now I'm just alone here at the window, you know, waiting. Man. This guy reminds me of that really strange bloke they interview in Robocop, where he's like, hey, Lord of the Jungle, man, woohoo. What's the point of this interview? He's just like, oh, I don't know. Oh, there's something in this sky. Oh, I don't know. Good luck to you, Walt. Hang in there. Uh, let's take a little break, folks. This weather's really something else, huh? <laughs> Come on, you 
Okay. I really thought that would be more enlightening than it turned out to be. Jump. Oh no, it's a very video game thing where you can't quite jump over a fence. There we go. It always bothers me in Skyrim. There's these little holes in the fence that really looks like you should be able to get through. Oh, you're gonna get it now. Whoa! God knows what you've done to that poor girl. This is Agent Nightingale. Oh jeez. Get him up, Hemingway. You're under arrest. You move a muscle, I'll unload right in your face. Oh, unload right in your face. Holy shit! Oh my god! Don't start shooting that poor fuck. He just. Why are they so eager to shoot me? Jesus Christ. I mean, I guess this is just America, let's be honest, but, um. What are you? I'm standing right here. You I'm glad they addressed me, this, I yes. There's a great Charlie Brooker clip where they're showing a bunch of Americans, they're showing them British TV shows, and they're, they're watching The Bill or something. And they're, they're so bemused that these policemen are just trying to calmly talk to it, people. Oh shit, oh god! They're just trying to, there's like this domestic situation and the police in Britain are just trying to calmly talk this couple out of shouting at each other in the street. And, and all the Americans are saying, if this was America, you'd be fucking tased at least, you'd be on the floor, you'd be guns in your face. You know, they're like shouting at the police officers as well, and the Americans are just like, Jesus Christ, that'd be a bullet in your face right there, you know? <laughs> I do wonder sometimes, a slightly political comment, I do wonder Americans must be so used to headlines like innocent man shot for no goddamn reason, they must be so used to that that, that, that how many of them don't even think like does this not happen everywhere? <laughs> Is this not just how the police are? Are there not just hundreds of police shootings every year in every country? Like I think last year in Britain we had six police shootings and that was unusually high. <laughs> That's like, ooh, that's a worrying trend. Oh shit, oh god, really? I must admit I'm slightly confused why they're so eager to shoot me. I mean, I'm a suspicious individual who sort of ran away from the police, but Jesus Christ, why are they so eager to shoot me? I'm not even armed! I'm not even armed! I could understand if I had a gun. Or if there was any sign I had a gun. Oh, where do I go? This way? Oh, I'd definitely be lost right now, if not for the map. I think keeping the map is necessary. I love my awkward shove, shuffling gait of like... Ugh. My health does go up very slowly, even when I'm not in the light. That surprises me. I thought the whole gimmick was that you need to get into the light. Hmm. Maybe on nightmare mode your health doesn't come back. That makes sense. Oh god, I'm running for my life, but I'll stop to pick up this random manuscript page. Oh, okay, I'm kind of running properly now. Oh no, it's just because I ran out of stamina. Oh, that's why I'm I'm running weirdly. Whoop, shit, hang on, oh god. Oh! What the hell? Oh shit! Oh god. Something's murdering the police now. Hmm. <laughs> It's just... It's just the Iron Giant stomping around. Oh god, wait, 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 wait! They were, they, they were addressing... They were addressing the fact that he's shooting at me for no goddamn reason. It's just well the subtitles are there because I can't even hear what they're saying, let alone you. <laughs> well, I'm glad someone again. I'm glad someone has addressed the fact that this guy was so eager to shoot at me while stood next to an innocent person as well. Oh shit! They're doing the flares. Ah, oh, that reminds me of Phantom Pain. I love I love in Phantom Pain how they like shoot flares and mortars, you know. You know, if you set off an alert, they'll chase you and then they'll start mortaring your last known location. I'm like, that, that was so cool to me. Oh. Oh, jeez. That's a nice touch with the... the, the 
It's a nice touch with the, the torchlight just spinning around as if something's grabbed him and spun him. Oh god. I don't feel a lot of sympathy for the cops after shooting me. Circling me. The cops didn't stand a chance. They were after a writer, not a monster. Have you seen this guy? He wears a tweed jacket. No one who wears a tweed jacket could be dangerous. <laughs> no one who speaks German could be an evil man. Hmm. I'm concerned they're gonna do the whole me running away from monsters when I don't have a weapon or a torch thing. I'm strongly suspicious they're gonna pull that trick on us. Oh! Jesus, they're really... They're really pulling out all the stops to try and get me, aren't they? Um, oh shit! <laughs> oh no, the birds! Oh my god, if they actually destroy the helicopter, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. Oh god. Ooh. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> I love the birds flying away afterwards like, yeah, our work here is done. So... <laughs> the, idea of, the idea of a bunch of birds just overpowering a helicopter, that's really funny to me. It's like, oh no, the birds! Ah! Not the bees! Ah! Oh. I thought this was a machine gun for a second. I was thinking, what the hell is this doing here? And I'm like, oh, I see. Oh dear. Poor fuckers. At least you narrowly avoided hitting the petrol station. That would have been a lot worse. Um... I'm just waiting for something to crawl up the cliff and stare me straight in the face. Like in every horror movie ever. Oh no, that's a really funny bit in Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome where um <laughs> where they're staring at they're staring through the binoculars and then some guy just <laughs> climbs up and looks them straight in the face. Yup, thermos. I wonder if the thermoses are just collectible items rather than they give you health or anything, now that I know my health just regenerates by itself. Yeah, something going on with this this FBI guy. Rose is being weird. You better get her checked out. Maybe she's hysterical or something. I don't know. Women. Well, fuck the police, let's just get out of here. Da, 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 da. Let's, be, let's be honest, we just find it... The hardest thing of all to believe is that the police would be so eager to shoot out white man. Hey, hoo-hoo! Main seemed like a decent guy. Perhaps he could give me directions to the coal mine. Oh, God. Unnatural shadows clung to the gate. The darkness that was after me was trying to stop me. I wouldn't get through without a fight. <laughs> I wouldn't get through without a fight. I will fight you, Gate! <laughs> um... Destroy... Oh, God. Jesus, that, that noise really made me jump. Um... I will fight you, Gate. I will defeat you. Oh. How do I destroy the Gate? Maybe this convenient... No power to the 
Oh. Okay. How do I... How do I get power to the searchlight? Why is there just a convenient searchlight here? I mean, I guess the FBI were looking for me, but... Just c happens to be lying around, just whether there's an evil gate that I need to sh shoot light at. I was trying to think, I, I couldn't think before what the other game was I was thinking of that this reminded me of. Um, there's a obscure PS2 game called Obscure, haha, <laughs> which is like a co-op... Think of like Resident Evil, but there's a two-player mode. It's a co-op survival, like horror game, and you know you have to shoot the zombie things, and they're also weakened by light. That's what that this reminds me of. Right, okay, doke. Oh my god, this looks dangerous. Did you see all the sparks coming off? Oh, there it is. Fucking sparks coming off this thing. Take this, vile demons. To see if I can oh. Fix it and try again. Oh, God. <laughs> Hang on a minute, vile demons, while I fix the, the generator. <laughs> you just literally kicked that massive petrol tank back in place. Oh. Yeah. I do still find it funny, this this thing, this this just happens to be here. Happens to have a generator. No one no one nearby guarding it or anything. I suppose we've all been killed by the monster. Oh, there we go again. Another. <laughs> uh. Guys, this is. Just <laughs> it's like. <laughs> uh. Uh. Doing this once was okay, but having two evil gates in quick succession. Hmm. <laughs> it's an evil gate. Ooh, okay. Having a torch lying around is slightly more understandable than having a fucking. Um, Evil gate. <laughs> and then the gate itself just disintegrates, okay. Well now I've got a torch again, so that's good. I'm not completely helpless. Oh shit. Damn! It took me a moment to recognize the flashbang grenades. They were an ideal weapon for my situation. Oh, okay. Um. Oop, gotta plug in the laptop. There we go. I want to. Oh, I see. Okay, I've got grenades now. I didn't have grenades before. Oh, possessed cops. Oh jeez, okay. Wow, okay. <laughs> oh, I hear things. I hear things chasing me. Fuck off, you. Oh. Yeah, so the darkness has killed all the guys and taken them over. Uh, I'm probably not listening to another whole radio conversation. Milt. Oh, there's this demon eating everybody, uh, the police cars exploding, there's helicopters, an explosion. Off 
They're still shooting? No, it was maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. It sounds serious, Pat. I'm telling you, it don't sound like no party. I've heard gun parties before, but this wasn't a gun party. This was a shooting in anger sort of gunshot. Oh, okay, that's that's it apparently. I was, I was cheekily glugging my beer. I've just drained my beer in 10 minutes, which uh, is having an effect on me, I will say. Mm. Uh... Who wants some then? I've got... Uh, oh, well timed. I've got fucking eight flashbangs. Come on. Woo! That is very entertaining. Just being watching them be like, I'm gonna get you. Oh no! Speak of horror games, I started playing Dying Light again. Oh shit! Oh, there's one. Oh. There's a couple of them. Boosh! Ah, ha, ha, ha. I started playing Dying Light again, and I, I really like Dying Light. I think when it was first, uh, when it first came out, I assumed it was just like a, um... Sorry, I'm belching with, um... I ate some noodles a minute ago, and I've had beer, and I'm belching up a storm. Oh, there's a guy! Oh, no! Oh shit, there's a couple of guys. There we go, that took care of them. I really like Dying Light. I think, I thought it was just another zombie game when I first heard about it, but it really, there's the parkour element and there's the fact that you run around. The main gimmick that the title refers to is the whole day and night cycle. Because during the day you can run around with some impunity, but at night the real horrible zombies come out and they're really fast, and really tough. And there's loads of them. So you're supposed to sneak and then if they see you run away. And that combined with the parkour just makes it so... It's so exciting, you never know quite what's going to happen. Like, you know, you can be sneaking around and then you just walk into one round a corner. And then you're running for your life frantically, you can hardly see anything. And you might be you might be scared to turn the torch on in case they... they because the, it's possible for them to lose you, but if you don't turn the torch off, they might, you know, see you again. Oh shit! Boosh! That didn't actually kill him like I assumed it would. Okay. Oh fuck, there's a light source right here if I can get through. Oh! I probably wasted all those grenades unnecessarily while I was talking about Dying Light, but Dying Light's a really great game. I did Let's Play of it uh, about a year ago, so you should definitely go watch that. Oh. Oh. We're actually in the um We're actually in the radio place. Why is he standing up? Why is he standing up? Also, does this guy never sleep because he does the daytime radio and also the nighttime radio? I love how he keeps having different nicknames for us. Oh shit! Jesus. There's definitely something up with this FBI guy. That's a fun little little detail, is that we actually we actually bump into the radio guy, that's fun. Oh god, you're just name dropping all the famous authors, aren't you? Oh. That's what you get for naming a book the sudden stop. Ha ha good I hadn't had the chance to tell Maine where I was going. I'd have to lose the cops and find my own way to the mine. Oh, this is the mine where I have to meet the guy. Is it? Oh, there's a train over there. That's exciting. Uh, 
Okay. I've said before that being drunk during a recording is a bit of a double-edged sword, because on the one hand... Oh shit, really? Uh, because on the one hand... Oh, where are they? There he is. Uh, fuck off. Uh, uh, ah, that'll teach it. Oh, no wait, hang on, that'll teach it. Oh shit, I threw it back and oh, I hit the wrong button. Oh, well there we go. The whole reason I did that rather than just throw a grenade at them was I was trying to avoid using ammo, but then I accidentally threw a grenade, so oh well. Especially now that I know, when you know that you can get your health back just by jumping into the light, it's very tempting to um, take a few hits in order to get the generator going and then just immediately get your health back, you know. That's very video game logic, I suppose. It's like, oh, it doesn't matter if I get hit by an axe, I can just get my health back. Um, what is it? Uh, Yes, one advantage, the, the, the drinking while recording is a double-edged sword, because on the one hand I find it easier to be entertained by things and go on, off on interesting rambles, but on the other hand I do get distracted easily. Also that's the phone, so I'll just get that, BRB. As usual it was just a telemarketing person being like, is such and such home? To which I truthfully said, no, nope, she's at work, to which they said, okay, and just put the phone down, so... I swear, 90% of phone calls we get around here is just, hello, I'm definitely not a telemarketer. Anyway, um, God, was the volume this loud way left? Uh, oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, yeah, you better, you better do whatever just happened. Uh, I think I remember Yahtzee saying that um, one issue he had with this game was um, the plot always had to contrive some reason for us to get stuck in the forest. And I think there's some truth to that. Oh, oh god. I think there is a skill element to this game where, you know, there's the whole... You can save a lot of ammo if you just run away from people and... Um, hang on. Oh god, why? Sod off. Oh, didn't mean to do that, but that'll work. Okay, there we go. Oh. Oh. There we go. I was frantically trying to find this stuff. I like that he said there was no rational reason for the power company lights to be here. I'm glad that he's acknowledging... Because I'd already made that observation 20 minutes ago, like... Oh, I see, you've got to repeatedly... Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Oh. Ooh, shotgun. Oh no. There's guys. Ah, oh, there's guys everywhere. Oh god. I might have assumed that would kill them rather than just stun them. Oh no. <laughs> And then I died. Uh, oh god, just adjusting after sitting down at an awkward angle. Uh, oh, did me do that? Oh, I keep pressing the wrong fucking button. Ah. Uh. Uh. God, this is a tough bit. Sod off. Uh... Oh, Jesus. Once again, I accidentally threw a flashbang there. 
The darkness controls the Taken. Yeah, I think we'd figured that out. I think we'd figured out that the evil guys were controlled by the darkness. <laughs> now this thing doesn't recharge my health either. Hmm. Oh well. Interesting that they're trying to mix this place up. I think I'll be surprised if I don't go back and replay this game on Nightmare Mode on my own time, once I've finished this series. God. It's like Satan is farting out of his butthole and all this horrible mist appears. I don't know why these thoughts occur to me. I blame alcohol. That's the way we're going, but what's in that direction? Just a manuscript page? I don't sure I care enough to pick up the manuscript page, given that guys will probably appear as I try and get it. Thermos. I've got loads of revolver ammo, I should really use a revolver. Da 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 da. Yeah, when I replay the game, I'll read all these um, manuscript pages too. Oh! I have, a, I have a recurring theory, by the way. Uh, I have a theory. I think train levels in video games are basically the opposite of sewer levels, because every train level in a video game tends to be the best level. Let me think. Uh, Uncharted 2, uh, Time Splitters Future Perfect, um, I would even argue something more obscure like Pariah. Pariah has a great train level. Um, I think it's just because the nature of trains is like the opposite of a sewer. Like a sewer is a boring linear place. But train is something exciting, it's moving, you know. You can have two trains. Oh shit. God. Alice, I'm here. I'm so alone. Oh God, what the hell is going on? You need to be careful. The connection had been terrible, but that wasn't the only thing that hadn't been right with the call. She sounded wrong somehow, but she had called me. You know, this whole thing of the wife, I remember playing Dead Space. One issue I had with Dead Space 1 is I immediately predicted, I'm going to spoil this because I immediately called it within five minutes of the game starting, I immediately called that the wife was already dead at the beginning of Dead Space because of course she fucking was. She starts appearing as a ghost within half an hour. You know, of course she's fucking dead. You know, the, the, the idea that they were trying to keep that as a mystery and there's a twist later where it's like, oh no, she's been dead the whole time. There wasn't a twist at all. I completely saw that coming. Something like what they're doing here is more interesting, where it's not clear what's happened to the wife, or what this darkness is, or what's going on. And the fact that it all seems to be tied into Alan's psyche. I like Dead Space a lot, the first Dead Space, but, you know, it's just... <sighs> Dead Space 3 came out so long ago, and they didn't seem to be doing anything with the franchise. Um, I'd be surprised if there wasn't some attempt at developing something by now. Oop, there's arrows pointing this way. Okay, that's fairly conclusive. Ooh. Convenient. The DM has been sprinkling ammo for me, so that's convenient. Come on. Oh, no, I've already got ammo. I've already got maximum ammo. Okay. Oh, shit! I knew it! I knew it! I knew this shit was too good to be real. Oh, fuck off. Where was that? Who did that? I think the game has got creepier now that now that enemies can appear without being loudly announced by an orchestral sting. That does make it creepier. Uh, I've got 19 batteries. I can probably spare one. Uh, I've mentioned this before, but I do think it's a subtly clever little touch that... Um, 
you're shooting from the hip usually, and if you want to do more precise aim, you have to zoom in and use the torch. Which logically doesn't make a lot of sense, but mechanically in a video game it's quite clever, because it means in order to do more precise shooting you have to drain your torch, which you don't want to do for very long. So it kind of forces you to take those little pot shots really like, oh, quick. It reminds me of um, an underrated game on the PS2 and Xbox is um, Urban Chaos Riot Response. So there's a neat thing, the whole main gimmick of that game is that you have the shield, and the shield can block anything, but people will always try and flank you and stuff. So you have the shield. If you're behind the shield, you can see through it, and but people can't hurt you. But you have to take pot shots by remo by lowering your shield in order to shoot at them. And so you get in this habit of like quickly lowering the shield and then taking a shot and then putting it back up. And it's a terrific game, it really is. Um, and not enough people. And people, I think it's one of those games that came out at the tail end of the PS2 era when most people were thinking about the next generation. Some of the best games of any console generation come out at the end of that generation. It's like Sheepdog and Wolf is like my favourite PS1 game probably, or at least one of them. But hardly anyone knows about it, and hardly anyone knows how great it is. It's like a classic platformer, stealth game and puzzle game hybrid, it's just... I've played... there's almost no games I've played that even resemble it. And it's hilarious, it's incredibly well made, it's a well made licensed game as well, you know, that's so rare. Oh shit. Well, toot to you too. There's going to be a sequence in this game of like us. I just know there's going to be a thing of us letting the uh, the the taken guys get run over by the train. Oh. Oh. What? Oh God. Oh. Are there just random items coming to life now? Uh, this fucking thing is alive! Ah! Uh, it's all a bit poltergeist for my liking. Piss off, everybody! Ugh. It's the whole bridge coming down. That'd be cool if the whole bridge fucking came down. Ugh. I don't think random items trying to kill me is very scary. <laughs> it's like, oh no, it's a, it's a gate. What about this? Will this come to life? I don't trust it. There's a page. Not that I really care, but I'll pick it up. Nope, hang on. As a teenager, just started to get interested in writing. Stephen King had been a source of. Oh, I talk about Stephen King again. I thought about all the inanimate objects that had come to life in his books. No <laughs> one is safe in a good horror story. Certainly not the protagonist. That's what makes them fun. This was anything but. The darkness could possess anything, and it was getting closer. Oh, hello. Heavy duty flashlight. Ooh. A superior flashlight. Interesting. So I've got, I'm kind of overflowing with batteries here. Calm down, crap top. The crap top's having a fit for some reason. Thermos. Something smashing. Oop, here they come. <laughs> oh, I thought that'd do something. Oh, there's a big guy. Uh, I didn't do a lot, actually. Oh, no. He's got a pickaxe. Look out. He's the sheriff. Looks a mussy. Uh, 
Now why is there a random car there? How did you even get a car there? It's under a fucking... <laughs> I like how this is becoming a bit of a running joke because I just keep finding just wrecked cars in weird places and complaining about it, but it bothers me. It bothers me. Oh, hello. Eat my heavy duty torch, oh god. Oh. Okay, I've got the big one. I'll lure him over to this thing. Okay, this should do it. Come on, come on. Oh yes, there we are. <laughs> I'll teach you to get ideas. Running. Yeah, I mentioned, it's relevant because it's a horror game, I mentioned Dying Light. In light you can hurt them. Yeah, we know this! We know this! This is figured out five hours ago! Dying Light is a horror game, and I find Dying Light intriguing because there are so many, like, clever little design touches, like... I love, it's like, when, when it's at night time it really feels like a horror game, because you're so vulnerable, and your only real option most of the time at night if you get caught is to just run away from the horrors. And especially on the higher setting, you know, the actual monsters, if you see them, are quite ridiculous. I call them Zoidbergs, because they just look like Dr. Zoidberg, but, um... You know, you hear them, but you can't see them very easily, because it's night time. And then the whole gimmick is that they're allergic to UV light, so you have this UV torch, so you shine on them and it makes them glow. And it's just such a freaky thing to walk around a corner, and you hear something, so you shine your torch in it, and it glows where there's this monster there, and then you're like, shit, and you run the other direction, and you're trying to lure them into one of the random traps that are lying around, or the whole parkour element, I think. Because there's so many fucking zombie games, and most of them are terrible these days, um, it's so surprising to find Dying Light is so well designed, and there's so many clever little touches, like... Because I always love Mirror's Edge, and to find another game with that sort of parkour element, but it's an open world and with a whole zombie thing. Oh god, a haunted... He tried to kill me with a forklift. Oh god. 